We'll be doing some uh, no-gi techniques today, although most no-gi techniques can be done in the gi. These are takedowns from the ground, a couple of a little bit more advanced ways to take people down from the ground. In all three systems, if you're a Shiru Karate person, Shinto Yoshinkai Jiu Jitsu person, or American Shuto, you have uh, uh, five uh, basic takedowns from the ground. Initially, a green belt, I think you have three takedowns from the ground that you do. These are beyond those techniques. So I'll show you a couple things. They're not that complicated, but they're, they're, they're more for the advanced group. So Eric will be standing here and I'll be down. One of the things that we usually do is we try to get Eric to where we can put our feet on his legs, his hips. Make sure that you're hand fighting his hands with your feet. Your legs become like another set of arms when you're down here. Um, this could be an MMA situation or a grappling situation, Jiu Jitsu competition. When uh, I want to attack Eric, I need my legs usually to be at about 90 degrees. If he steps further back out, if he's a little too far out, I might have to scoot in to get him. But if I have him here at 90, whatever's happening, maybe if it's a striking situation I kick up, then I know I can, I can attack him with most of my takedowns from the ground. So for this takedown, I'm gonna shoot my leg through and I'm gonna go underhooking his leg here. When I do that, I'm gonna come up this way. Like I'm gonna do a knee bar from down here, but instead I'm gonna go to the far leg, push it away, and as I do, I'll cut this knee down to the ground. I'll shove this leg across under my opposite arm. This leg shoots down in triangles above the knee line. And then I reach back, pinch his toes with my tricep to my back, and lock his heel up. We get a deep de la Hiva, and we take the opponent's back, and when we, we grab the gi or an arm, and we pull him back into our, our, our rear guard, we, we call it a float, or the kids call it a float down, and that's become the nickname for it. In this case, I can't grab a hold of anything. I don't get his arm. He pulls away from me or gets away, and I can't attach to the gi. So we'll show you how to take him down, and we'll finish it up in the same leg lock we just used previously. What I'm gonna do again, 90 degrees, I'm in good position. My, my feet are on his legs, or, or hips, feet, wherever I wanna be. Sometimes I'm hooked to the side. I'm gonna roll a kneecap out and use my heel to pull the other knee and buckle it inward. So I'll roll the kneecap outward as I buckle this one inward. Deep de la Hiva. That brings the foot over here if I turn him real good. There's other options if it doesn't come this far. Now he sees that I couldn't get a hold of his arm. He tries to bail out and I use the hook to keep the other leg. He won't be there forever, so I gotta get that leg. And now I drive his knees forward as I pull on his legs backwards, and that gives me his back. I'm gonna release this leg to invite the bailout. He goes to bail out, and I keep this leg with two hands. It's very hard for him to get away, so just pull away a little bit there. Very hard, I actually can pull him right back. This leg will buckle the knee down, as I shoot my leg, my opposite leg, my bottom leg, past the knee line. I'm gonna bend this foot up. So if he tries to get away now, try to get away here, it's gonna be hard. His leg's like a big hook. If I, if I push on his toes, he won't be able to straighten the leg out. Straighten your leg out, he can't straighten the leg out. I shoot my arm under, and now it's very hard for him to get out. I usually like to try with that. And now I get my heel hook. Now that's the same situation we had earlier in the first takedown. Let me just show you, I'm gonna alleviate pressure on the, on the heel. If Eric were to hop over with his leg, we were in a 50-50 situation here. So it's just your, your heel hook from 50-50. One of the positions before a, a takedown in your green to purple belt level situation but uh, I'll give you a, another option here. So we get what we call a standing mount. The guy's above me, he's about my waist 
uh, position and, he, and he's standing over me and I'm probably warded off some punches here. However you got here, you, there's a lot you could do from here. So well, there's a drill that we do here. We'll, we'll, we'll come up and we'll bring our legs into position and there's a heel hook right here and I'll, I'll circle around to the other side and we go back and forth this way and you can see that if I buckle him this way, I can already start the heel hook before he goes to the ground. When you do this, a, a more savvy opponent is gonna clear that leg and turn his knee out. So I'll get to position. Now sometimes we'll hook the back of the leg. Other times if his stance is wider or I can post my foot on his inside of his leg, I'll push the leg out as opposed to sweeping it. So I'll be in this post anticipating that he's gonna clear this leg. So he clears this leg and he turns his knee out so I can't buckle it in again. Well, I just release this side and I'll turn him down this way. And here we are in our 50-50 position again. Now something I wanna explain in this uh, situation here is how to defend your feet. We did a 50-50 takedown. Oh, I don't know, I think it was last year we did it. And I didn't explain that enough. So I'm gonna explain it now. Usually I tuck my heel in underneath him. So I turn my heel in towards him that way. And I stack my foot to protect it. And what happens when I do that, his heel is exposed here. So there's my 50-50 attack. Now one of the things that people will do is they'll triangle their legs together here. And something that I just recently learned, we used to break this apart with two hands and everything. One of the things that I just recently learned, it was really great watching Dean Lister perform a technique in a seminar. Push this leg out as you scoot your hip this way and there's your heel for your attack. Whenever you attack the heel here, I'm gonna reach back and pinch his toes with my tricep. My wrist ends up right where his heel is. And it's very hard for him to escape. I, I won't even join my hands here because I can I can feel the pressure on Eric's leg already here. This is what we were doing the other day. We were posting our foot on the inside here as opposed to hooking the back of the leg here. So when we do this, there's, there's several things that could happen here. But as he goes to control my foot, it'll be different. I could go right to my 50-50. I'll kick my leg out, bring it around. Here's my 50-50 and I'm in my attack position, my attack situation here. My feet are guarded here, I got my heel in, got my other foot on top, I got, I'm dead deep past the knee line here. This could also go into an Achilles attack here. This could also go to uh, outside Oscar 50-50 Achilles attack, top side. Just wanna address uh, a little bit of what your opponent might do in this situation. If it's more of a jiu-jitsu match or even in an MMA match, let me show you some of the variables of this situation and this takedown from the ground. So I'm down and Eric is in what we call a standing mount. And one, one way to get in position on this opponent is, is to bring yourself around and hook the back of the leg here. So he's gonna take care of both legs. Before he was just taking this out, had a foot on the, on the, on, on the inside of the thigh here and he was taking this one out, and I was going right to the takedown. But if he controls both feet here, and this, I have this hook from behind, I can go into my X guard here. My X guard, I get his hands to the mat, I switch to my reverse X, elevate him, drop his leg in, and now I have him in 411. I could go up to the heel hook, could go to the Achilles lock, whatever it is. So we're here and we choose to get this hook in the back end. He goes to control both legs and before he starts his pass, I put my X in, I bring his hands to the mat, I switch my X as I'm doing that, and I lock his legs in here. Bring the legs down this way so that you put no pressure on your knee. 